My name is Sniper and Spun, and I just stealthed my way like a ninja into this video for a character that is not even a ninja at all. He's a samurai, and the next character of the Super Smash Bros. 5, newcomer, speculation, ideas, predictions, and speculation, and whatever the heck else. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Character number 24, Murasama Castle's own Takamaru. The retro character, first retro character choice I have for this series. Give me a minute, just trying to stay down there and sneak my way up. Kind of took a little bit of energy on me, but yes. I acted like a ninja for a samurai for the sake of entering the video differently and also because I do recall they kind of, Nintendo at some point, I think in Smash Bros. on the trophy or something I remember hearing, they referenced him as a ninja when he's obviously a samurai, which is really freaking weird. Does this look like a ninja to you? Actually, a typical stereotypical ninja isn't really what ninjas look like anyway, so, you know, we can't even go off of that anyway, so there you go. But yes, Takamaru is my 24th character on this list, the first retro character. And just like always, three categories. Why does Takamaru... I'm, Takamaru, I'm, just, I'm screwing up myself all over here for now. Why does Takamaru make sense for Super Smash Brothers? What moveset ideas can I give him? And what percentage chance I can see him getting in this game? Let's get started with, obviously, the reasons why he makes sense, I think, to still be in the game. The reasons why I think he still makes sense to be in the, you know, Smash Brothers is the same reasons I think he's almost identical. His reasons didn't really change too much from Smash Brothers. There's certain characters whose reasons kind of dropped since Smash Brothers. There's certain characters that have more reasons to be in Smash Brothers, you know, that have dropped, you know, in re you know, dropped in reasons for why they make sense in Smash Brothers since Smash Brothers 4. And there are certain characters that have, like, gained more reasons, updated reasons, new reasons for why they should be in, you know, a new game since Smash Bros. 4. Takamaru has kind of stayed the same for the most part. Not entirely, but he's kind of stayed the same. At least he still has legit reasons for why he gets in. And those basically are, he was close to getting in the Smash 4. He was on the verge of being in and Sakurai dropped him because, you know, no one really knew him outside of Japan, which really hasn't stopped him before anyway, so... I find that really weird as a reason, but he was originally going to be in there, so I think him being close to being in Smash Bros. 4 is going to probably help his chances now in Smash 5. I'm not saying that's a guarantee, but I think it's it helps his chances, although we've seen stuff like that before with like the Bra 7, like Dixie Kong and everything didn't help him the least bit getting into Smash 4, so him getting close doesn't isn't a guarantee, but it gives him a legit reason why I feel he might have a chance of getting in. He has a big impact in Japan. He was one of the biggest, like, NES, or should I say Famicom, since I'm talking about Japan here, characters in, you know, from Nintendo on Japan, in, in Japan. Like, it's basically The Legend of Zelda set in feudal Japan, playing as a samurai going around trying to save, you know, Japan from evil alien monster samurai lord ninja people. I have no idea. Never played the game. <laughs> but, um... He's, he made an impact in Japan. It was probably one of the more popular Famicom games, and he's been referenced numerous times since then. He's had multiple cameos. Samurai Warriors 3, Captain Rainbow, N numerous... Like he's been now an assist trophy in Smash Brothers 4, and there's other games that he's been in, too. And I'm trying to remember what they are, but I do know... Oh! Nintendo Land on the on the Wii U. He was one of the... He, had, he was one of the few... A, you know, Nintendo series that got an attraction based off his franchise. And like I said, Samurai Warriors 3, Captain Rainbow, he's still very relevant because he's used in all these, like, NES, you know, Remix 1 and 2. He's used in these cameos for these outside games. He's been in Nintendo Land. They, they finally released his game, even though he's been, you know, outside, you know, he's never been fully legit physically released outside of Japan. They released it as a virtual console game, an eShop game on the 3DS. And he's just a very, very legendary character. And I wouldn't be su surprised if how often they're using him in cameos and all these outside appearances and spin-offs that we may very well eventually see a return of his series, a remake of his game, a sequel to his game. His game, I could very well see getting eventually the Kid Icarus treatment, how it got went from Kid Icarus 1 and, on the NES and the, the Game Boy game to getting Uprising many years later on 3DS. I could eventually see maybe even Sakurai doing that. So he might be that next retro character that gets a revival like that. They're using him so much they at least still care about him, and he might eventually get a, re a reboot of his franchise, a remake of his franchise, and somehow be brought back. So that's basically the reasons why I feel he still makes sense. He was close to Smash Bros. 4. He was in a sister of Smash Bros. 4. Multiple cameos like Nintendo Land and Captain Rainbow, Samurai Warriors 3, Big Impact in Japan, one of the most popular family home games. Finally, the game is released on a 3DS Virtual Console. He's just super legendary. And they may very well bring his series back one day. 
That's his. Re that's the reasons for why I feel it makes sense to get in as a retro character. Move said ideas, and since I've never played the game, I had to do a little bit of research to kind of see what he actually does, and it kind of goes off what he did as an assist trophy in Smash Brothers 4 versus like what he does in actual games. Smash attacks would be the samurai sword, just various swings of the samurai sword, jumping in the air, doing an air blade. He spins and slashes people. He vacuum slashes people to come in closer to him so he can get some combos in. He basically dashes forward and stabs him or slashes him, like various forms of how a samurai fights, but doing a little bit of cartoon because he's not super serious. The game, unless you would go with kind of go with what he did in Samurai Warriors 3, which is a little more realistic version of him, but kind of go for like some sort of cartoony, old school, classic, legendary retro character vibe to it and give him a little bit of a cartoony vibe to it where he's not super serious, but he's not super like he's not like a Fire Emblem character, but he's not like a goofy, super goofy retro character. I think it'd be kind of cool if you kind of do a blend and mix where he's semi realistic, semi serious, because he is a samurai after all, but then kind of give him a little bit of a fun side too. So mix like the original game with some Samurai Warriors and then I throw a little bit of Fire Emblem in there, maybe a little bit of goofy like Zelda type stuff in there, I don't know. But I think the Smash attacks would focus heavily on the Samurai Sword and him doing various strikes, stabs, jabs, you know, various things with it in the air and on the ground. So that's what I think his Smash attacks would be. And I never really talked about the, the, the grabs for characters, but I do did look that he can judo grab people, he can grab people to the ground, just throw them to the ground. I did see people mention that because I did look up Musa ideas that people were talking about, like Evo Waluigi, like I mentioned in the Rayman video. So I'd say I didn't mention, ever mention a grab to anyone, but I think his grab, he grabs him and then he judo throws him to the ground, which would be kind of cool. It would be kind of a, like a more samurai karate-esque version of what Snake does, except Snake snaps people's necks and stuff like that. So just throw him to the ground, like CQC type stuff. There you go. And then his special attacks would be all the special abilities, the special powers he gets in the game. Because you, during, when you play the game, you get, like, by beating bosses like Zelda, you get these extra things where, like, Mega Man, I should really be saying. Obviously, the shurikens are a major thing. He did that in the, his assist trophy status. So I'd say some distance attacks, he throws one shuriken, but you could charge it up, and he throws two. And if you hold it even long enough, he throws three, which he does throw multiple shurikens in his assist trophy thing. So that's, that's probably what he would do with that. He does smoke bombs and poison bombs and flashbang bombs. The poison bombs maybe you can damage the opponent for a short like few seconds. Like they get they receive damage over time if they're inside the the smoke of the uh, the poison. The smoke bombs can probably just distract you, make them a little dizzy, maybe like slow them down a little bit or something. And then flashbang bombs maybe just stop them entirely, so you can't move your character for like a minute or two. I wouldn't say a minute or two, like a few seconds, like 10, 15 seconds. A minute or two would be way too overpowered. And he, one thing I noticed he really does is fire magic. He does a whole heck of a lot of fire magic. Like, he does three flames forward. He does flames from all different angles on him. He does one flame. He does a wave of flames. Maybe different buttons can do different flame attacks. Or maybe if you charge it up, you do one single flame. Three flames. Multiple flames if you charge it up all the way. I don't know. He has a deflect ability, which I think if you time it just right, you could deflect an opponent's attack back on themselves. And I don't know what the rising sun is. I looked it up. But it's like some sort of like I think thunder attack or something. There was an attack uh, people men keep mentioning. So I looked at the moose for Evil Waluigi. They mentioned the Rising Sun, which I think is some sort of fire attack or some sort of something. I, I forgot now, but I'd give whatever that is. Sounds interesting. It could be good for him. And he does have the ability to go invisible. And I think maybe for like five seconds, if you do it, you're invulnerable to attack, which would be cheap. But if you, as long as you do it like three to five seconds and don't make it super long, it won't be overpowered or OP or whatever the heck people want to call it. And it's a good way of getting yourself out of danger, strategizing in the battle, and getting the heck out of there to regroup and come up with a new strategy and go back in. And it could be a way for you to dodge and attack, but you probably shouldn't be, like maybe there's like a bar or something like low max like punch special bar or something like where you only could do it so long and then you have to let it recharge or something, which would be cheap if you can't, if it doesn't do that. But that's how to do his special attacks. His fire magic, the flashbang bombs, the poison bombs, smoke bombs, the shurikens, chargeable shurikens, chargeable fire, whatever the heck rising sun is, invisibility special, and deflecting people's attacks. Now the final smash, I looked this up. People kept calling it the, I seen it mentioned like in like one or two like uh, made up raw, um, move sets I seen for this character. Cause I know he's he did lightning attacks as well as fire, but I didn't really know exactly what the lightning attack's done. Like, like I said, I never played the game. But someone called it the Inazuma 
lightning. So he strikes the stage with lightning. But I'd say instead of just doing that, maybe have it do something with swords, or maybe it's kind of like Mars attack, where it's like the critical and they send them flying off. Maybe he gets lightning on the sword, and then he just goes for a samurai strike, and the character's like, no, we're going to blow off the stage. I don't know. I don't know. Something like that. It'd be kind of cool. Like, either do it where he just strikes the stage with lightning, like it happens in the game. You strike the screen with lightning, and it hurts them. I didn't know exactly what the name of it was, but I seen I looked it up, and someone called it Inazuma Lightning. So he just, either one, he just drops the stage with lightning, or two, he electrifies his sword and goes in for the killing, like, samurai blow. Like, if you ever watched, like, a samurai movie where they go and they slice, and who's, who, who got killed first? Who, who actually got hit? And then the opponents are like, uh, and then blow off the stage. That'd be kind of cool. Focus on him being a samurai with the lightning ability would be kind of freaking cool. And then focus the fire and stuff like that during his special attacks. So there you go. Now we get into the third category, the probabilities, potential chance I can see him in. I'm giving him a 75% chance, which is high for a retro character because, like I mentioned before, retro characters are kind of like, uh, you, you can't predict them. They are like, it's like you can predict like a possible thing for a Nintendo character, a main one, or you know, third party characters, but retro characters are like a, they're, they're hard to predict. They are almost a, impossible because you don't know what retro characters pick. Retro characters just are hand-picked out, while third-party characters or regular Nintendo characters are based off like relevancy, recency, push from Nintendo, push on Nintendo by third parties and stuff like that. You can kind of go like, what games are coming out recently, what character they grab. But retro characters are just like a, just a mess. They could be anyone, but I do think if there's one retro character that stands out, it would be him. I'm not giving him 100% chance because they could just as well pick someone from the Game Boy or the Super Nintendo, or the N64, or any other retro character. He's not a guaranteed given, which is why I only give him a 75%, but he's a 75% because I feel he's like one of the top retro characters they could add to this game. And that's it for this video. Takamaru for Smash Brothers 5. And put in the comments if you guys think about well, my moose ideas, my you know reasons why I should get in, my 75% chance, would you get it higher or lower to him, what moose ideas would you give him? What about you know reasons why you feel he makes it sense to get in? That's it for this video. My name is Stephanie Spun. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to. Have a lovely day. Stay tuned for the 25th character coming next video. The third party character that is now getting a third game, even though it's technically not a third game in his franchise, but he's been around since the Wii era. People have been asking for him since then, too, and his creator as well. Travis Touchdown from the No More Heroes franchise is my 25th character. So see you all later.